This presentation is about technical aspects of PCI in bifurcation left main coronary artery disease. This is evidence that a majority of left main coronary artery stenosis are localized in the distal part of the vessel. Distal left main narrowing suggests lesion location in the site of confluence zone. Polygon of confluence is an anatomical area including bifurcation of distal left main and branch osteal segments of arising main branches. This area is a complex geometrical space that can be only partially evaluated by angio and ibus. In cat lab, in real life, we are working with 2D imaging and evaluating coronary vessels by analysis of shadows of the coronary tree. 2D imaging has well no limitation for evaluation of the confluence zone. By Andrew. This is a foreshortening of shadows of the coronary arteries and an overlap phenomenon of one coronary artery on another. 3D imaging and colors help us to define the borders and shape of confluence zone. The question is, what is the proper geometrical location of confluence zone? Here, here, or here, or oh, what is the exact location of the filling defect? What is the real site of the filling defect? LAD, circumflex, or distal left main coronary artery? The next very important problem is accurate stand positioning to the branch osteal segment. Incorrect definition of branches of the osteum leads to incorrect stand positioning. Uncovered osteum is a cause of suboptimal angiographic results requiring optimization by balloon or additional stand. This may be associated with dissection spreading to confluent junction and predict restenosis or thrombosis. Stent protrusion to the confluence zone is associated with non-optimal stent to vessel opposition and presents challenges to passage of a balloon or other device during the current procedure or in the future and development of stent thrombosis or restenosis. This is a classification of distal left main coronary artery disease based on involvement of bifurcation component. According to a large angiographic registry, evidence of three components of bifurcation left main stenosis is documented in 29% of cases. Involvement of two components, LED and left main, left main and circumflex, or osteo-LED and osteo-circumflex, in 39%. And one component, isolated osteo-LED, osteo-circumflex, or very distal left main, in one-third of cases. Evidence of significant ramus medianus and left main trifurcation is documented in 10% of cases. Diameter of left main in relation to the LED and circumflex diameter is an important anatomical feature that has to be analyzed to proper selection of technical approach. Average, average diameter of the left main is about 4.4 mm. The osteoproximal LED segment is about 3.8 mm. And circumflex artery 
is about 3.4 mm. The left main to circumflex angle plays an important role in proper PCI technique selection. In majority of cases, the left main to circumflex angle is more than 90 degree and the average angle is about 120 degree. We divided two groups of patients according to the left main to circumflex angle. The first group with an angle close to 90 degrees and the second with an angle of more than 120 degrees. We can classify two shapes of left main bifurcation. T-shaped with an angle close to 90 degree and Y shape with an angle of more than 120 degrees. In patients with Y shape left main bifurcation, we can classify three subtypes. Y1, when the left main diameter is nearly equal to the sum of the LED and circumflex diameters. This is a variant of large left main with a relatively small diameters of rising branches. Y2 shape is a variant when the left main diameter is a nearly equal to the diameter of one of the main branches. And Y3 shape when the diameters of all left main bifurcation components are approximately equal. What is the main features of PCI in this site? Physiological significance of supplying area, special significance of arising branches, risk of possible procedural complications and significance of possible late complications require the proper selection of patients, operator team and technique of revascularization. What is the difference between PCI in distal left main and PCI in another bifurcation site? PCI in distal left main as a rule is more technically challenging, time limited and requires use of large diameters balloon and stents, more complex technique and IVUS guidance. One stent technique is a relatively simple technical solution for this subset. This technique is appropriate for T-shaped bifurcation and Y2 and Y3 shape. Implantation of one stent is limited in patients with Y1 shape due to inability to achieve proper stent up position in patients with prominent difference of diameter of the left main and stenting branch. The main disadvantages of the one stent techniques is possible damage and incomplete solution for an uncovered side branch. Stent implantation in distal left main suggests two possible mechanisms of remodeling of confluence zone. The first one is Carina shifting. The second is plug shifting. The majority of patients after stent implantation in a left main to LED segment have reduction of the osteoluminal diameter of the circumflex artery. A narrow distal carina angle between LED and circumflex arteries is an important predictor of circumflex compromise.